Welcome back, this is part seven, and we are going to clean up our code in this part. Uh, in the last part, we added a game background, you see right here above me. And so check out that part for that information. So here we are going to work on cleaning up some of our code. Here is our game scene. So what I generally like to look for is any long methods. If your methods are long, so update seems pretty long here, uh, it could probably be cleaned up by moving logic into its own method. It'll help you read the code um, and prevent some errors like variable shadowing or whatever might happen if you have all your code in one method. So that's a candidate. This create scene may be okay. Um, another thing I like to do is make sure all of my uh, string literals I, that I don't actually have to write them out manually each time because typing is very error prone. So that one is easy, so we'll just do that one first. So let's just go to our project here. We're going to make another folder under source. We'll call it consts. Um, you can call it something else, but consts is in things that don't change, constants. And we're going to create one called, let's say, scene keys. These are the scene keys. And what we're going to do is create a bunch of const variables. And let's call that as title screen. And title screen. And then so we have game. We'll call that game. We have game background. Game background. And then we will export them all. So title screen, game, game background. All right, so that means we can import these in any file where we import this file. So we'll just show you in main. So we will do, so import, we're gonna do star. So that's everything, all the exports from the file as scene keys from, and then so we're gonna do dot slash cons scene keys. So now scene keys is an object with all the keys that we exported from scene keys.js. So now down here, we're gonna replace title screen, the string literal title screen, with scene keys dot title screen. And then we'll do the same for game, scene keys dot game, scene keys dot game background. So now as you can see here, if we use scene keys dot game, we cannot accidentally type this wrong. Because I mean, if we typed game wrong here, um, it will throw a runtime error. So I'll let you show you because scene keys dot GAE doesn't exist. Uh, there is no, just this, it does un, uh, undefined and there's no error, but you see nothing runs. I guess writing, typing out game would do that too. So if you're using TypeScript, it would in fact throw an error because JE does not exist within scene keys. So this, so with the, with your, with your editor that helps you code complete, that also limits your, your typos because let the computer type before you. Computers don't make mistakes. Only the mistakes we tell it to make. Now, so we did that there. So we know that in our game scene, we actually do run game background. So like we have repeated this game background string twice, which is just more room for errors if we make a typo. So here we are going to also import everything. Now, okay, we can also do this. If we're gonna wanna import everything, just what we want from so this is dot dot out, const scene keys. Now we just want game background, right? So there we go. Now we go here and we're gonna run game background. And here, game background. All right. So everything still works. That looks good. So that's one cleanup we can do is simply remove any string literals that we're using everywhere to reduce potential errors. So now another thing we can do is clean up some of these larger methods. 
So let's look at this update method. Let's collapse that. So we have some discrete actions happening, or at least things we can organize together. So this is doing the paddle movement, right? The player's paddle. This is doing the AI. Mm -hmm, yes. So obviously there's already potential for error for scoring actually. As you can see right here, this is an early out. Um, so if if the ball and the and the AI paddle difference actually is not greater than ten or ten or greater, you will actually do none of the ball logic for scoring here. So it's always going to wait. So it's not it's not a terrible bug, I think. I think it'll eventually score, but I guess there is a possibility the ball's moving really slow that it won't score. So let's fix that. So first, let's actually move this AI logic into, into a method. We're gonna refactor, it's called refactoring slowly and in pieces so that we don't just break as minimal things as possible. So let's call this, let's call this update AI. Let's keep this simple. And then we can largely just copy this into update AI. Right, this sounds about right. So let's delete that, make a note. This is the AI logic goes here. Okay, paste, let's see. This stuff ball, this stuff paddle, that should be available. AI speed is local, diff is local. Good, that looks good. Okay, let's go back here. We'll want this dot update AI. So let's see, AI is still updating, so that looks good. We have no errors in our console here. Great, now let's also move our scoring logic. Um, let's see, which is just this. We can just keep it simple, we'll call this um, check score. It's probably not the best, but we'll just we'll just do this for now. So check score like just like before, so we know we're gonna call check score here. Check score. Now we need to get scored on. Our AI is pretty good. So we're gonna have to let the AI score on us. Maybe we should make this ball move faster as well. In Pong, the ball should, and their scoring still works, and uh, the ball should move faster every time it hits a wall or a paddle, I believe. So we will do that in an upcoming part. So now this is moving the player paddle. So let's call this uh, and player input. Do that. Copy that, and then here in this handle player input. But maybe this should actually be. Let's call this process player input instead. So we'll change that. All right, I can still move. Sure, I can still do that. All right, great. So there's no errors. And that all looks good. So now, of course, our update is also easier to read. We're going to do. We're going to first process player input, then update the AI, then we're going to check score. So this is much easier to read, and it does solve a potential bug here when it was all together that we have an early out here, and we could have put more code under this, like it was up here, under this that would just not get executed because we exited early. So this looks better. Um, let's see, is there anything else that we would like to change? Well, I mean, so far this it looks okay. There's no reason to um, refactor or fix code just for the sake of fixing it, unless you know it may be a problem. So, so far this looks good, that looks good. Not bad, not bad. Is there a game? Let's look at our other classes. So we're not really using title screen yet, so we will, in a future part, set it up so that your title screen will link to your game scene. 
we'll leave that as is. Game background. This is probably fine. This is very, sh very short. Keeping it uh, short and simple is always easier to read. So I know we are using these colors in a bunch of places. Or are we? We just so game does have white. Let's do that. Typing out that white is sort of annoying. We'll just call this colors colors.js and so we're using white so we'll just say white and white is ff 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 and then we're going to export like we did in the scene keys white so we can add other colors here as well but i don't think we're actually using any other colors so let's go game background white so we, are, we will import let's just do this um, as colors from where are we? Consts colors. And instead of this, we can do colors dot what? Right, that even looks nicer. Oh, so we have to place that. Right, so that this even looks easier to read that we know we're putting a color here. Although of course zero x f f f f f f is clearly a color if you know your x values. And not all of us do. This is still way easier to read. Yeah, because we're humans, we're not computers. We'd rather read English or letters or whatever language we use than numbers. Seemingly random letters and numbers. Alright, so let's let's do as colors from so now in parcel I can also use tilde the tilde um, key to go to the root of your project. And I think, although this may not be set up actually, let's just not do that for now. So we're gonna go out consts and then color. But there is a way to not have to use relative paths. So you always go to the absolute root and then go from there. That does make moving your files around better. So you don't have to constantly update these. Like if you move the game out of scene for some reason, you have to change all these uh, paths. So here we have a color. So we're gonna do colors dot white. Any more colors dot white? Colors dot white. Colors dot white. Still looks good. Looks good. So anywhere that we see that we've used a hex value for white, we can just change it to use colors.white. So far that looks pretty good. That should need it. All right. So now we've cleaned up our code a bit. Everything is a little easier to read and it's less error prone. It's generally good to do some of this as you're coding and not wait till the end when you have this massive project and you've forgotten things you've done in the past. So it's always good to trim the weeds, so to speak, as you go instead of waiting till the end. So now we have some better code. There's still a lot more to do in this game. So in the next part, we're going to set up the title screen to go to the game screen scene.